thank you. Um, I see I've already uh, got the first mistake. I've got the wrong uh, title slide. But it, uh, why I modified it, but uh, then I must have uh, put in the original one. It's, it should be uh, drain mod training and determining field effective hydraulic conductivity. Uh, so I'll be talking more about the drain mod training and whatever time is left over, I want to say just a little bit about this determining field hydraulic field effective hydraulic conductivity. And the reason I want to do that is I think I have in, inadvertently and unintentionally misled you in the past about this subject. And I want to be sure that I, I don't leave that uh, if, if, in fact, if in fact you were listening. <laughs> Which, uh, so what I mostly wanted to talk about when Jane asked me, do you want us to speak, um, um, I thought about it for a, a while and said, well, I think I would like to take this opportunity to make an announcement. And that is that we are going to be, uh, we are releasing, and in fact you could get them now, the drain mod instruction modules, which basically are the lectures for a three credit graduate course uh, in our department. We've I've not been able to release, I've wanted to do this for a long time. So let me back up. Uh, th these are the lectures that I've recorded uh, over the last, I think it was about 10 years ago, the first ones were recorded. And the last ones were, were recorded a year or so ago on contract for uh, NRCS to uh, develop some additional instruction for the application of drain mod for specifically what you're interested in or most of you are interested in. Uh, its application to drainage, control drainage, and subirrigation, with some with uh, emphasis on uh, somewhere other than North Carolina and and specifically the Midwest. Uh, so I'll be showing you a clip from from that. Um, so these are uh, 30. There are 30. There were 28 lectures, with the six additional lectures that. I, I did on contract for NRCS uh, uh, that I just mentioned. That brings it to 34 lectures. They're about one hour each, uh, except that it's one hour measured in the time of, a, of a, a university professor. So some of them are 50 minutes, 55 minutes, and some of them are an hour and five minutes, and some are one or two might be an hour and 25 minutes. But but there's a lot of there's a lot of material here, uh, a lot of words anyway. I hope they're uh, material. So these these lectures are specific to the application of drain mod. And uh, by way of part of the introduction is I want I want to say two two things about this. Uh, I think the first of all the greatest disappointment that I have when I see. Uh, First of all, when I see a, a paper that someone has has used drain mod for something and has uh, and have written about it, I'm I'm um, I'm happy. <laughs> I am uh, thankful that if someone has uh, has uh, thought that that was a good enough tool to use in their research or in their uh, application. But often, then I become very disappointed because they have not used it for one reason or another. They haven't used it properly, and they get a result that is different than the one they should have gotten because they didn't understand something. And, and I don't really look at it from the pr perspective of blaming them or criticizing them. It makes me feel bad that we didn't develop the, the instructional materials that would have enabled them to use it properly. So that's one point I want to make in the introduction. Uh, that uh, it was that motive that caused me to want to release these uh, these instructional modules, uh, thirty some of them, which I think if you if you uh, listen uh, watch them, and if you're really interested in using the model, they will help you use it properly. It's not a perfect model. I've never claimed that it was. It's an approximate model, but it's pretty good if used properly. Um, on that subject, and I've got to watch my time here, I already used uh, 
last night when someone, when they asked me to speak, I went way over the time I should have, so I won't, don't want to do that today. But uh, the the um, now I forgot what I was going to say. Hmm. Uh, so, the, in my opinion, the most critical factor in um, in de determining how what a, what kind of a job you do, how well you you do what you're trying to do with a model, is the training. I would rather have if you've got two models uh, to that you could choose between to uh, simulate the performance of systems, as in this case drainage systems, uh, and and you're well trained in using one, and you're not well trained in using the other one, even if it if the one that you're well trained in is not the best model for the job, you'll probably do a better job with that model than you will with the one that you're not trained to use. The training is really, really important. Understanding the model is really, really important. It's a, it's a critical factor. And so um, I've wanted to, th this is the point I wanted to make, I've wanted to release these, these models for a long time uh, to make it possible for people to, uh, to uh, get, to, to at least learn what we think we know about the application of the model. If they choose not to, if it's available to them and they, they don't use it and then use it improperly, that's on them. But if they, if they, if they, uh, uh, use, if they get the instruction and, and use it properly and it, it uh, fails for whatever reason, then I, I will take my share of the responsibility for that. So anyway, that's too much about that. And by way of introduction, the, the uh, drain mod instructional modules are listed here. Um, the ones in black are sort of uh, the, the, the basic core of simulating the performance of drainage systems. The soil water balance in poorly drained soils as affected by drainage uh, system design and management. And so you see the first uh, eight of those are introduction to the to the, to the course, Introduction to Drain Mod, uh, two sessions on the statics of soil water and how you calculate uh, soil water distribution uh, in poorly drained soils. Um, so uh, then, uh, I don't want to go into in detail on any particular group of these. Uh, then uh, the modules there in green, there are uh, one, two, three, four of those it had to do with the application of the model for wetland hydrology. There's a lot of people that wanted to use it for, it's been used a lot for characterizing wetland hydrology, determining whether or not wetland hydrology exists on a site and, and other factors related uh, to the hydrology of wetlands. Uh, more on the basic mechanics of the drain mod, the determining saturated hydraulic conductivity and so forth. And then starting with module 16, uh, control drainage and sub-irrigation and how, it, uh, how the model can be applied uh, for that. And then uh, this is where we supplemented what was uh, originally uh, prepared for our students in uh, drainage uh, water management and the application of drain mod with uh, six additional uh, modules on control drainage and sub-irrigation, parts uh, two through seven. And I'll be demonstrating a little bit one of those in just a moment. Then in, in the, uh, the uh, topics uh, in purple there, 17, 18, 20, 21, and 22, are the application of the model for on-site uh, wastewater treatment, uh, home sewage systems, where uh, on-site systems that are installed in very poorly drained soils where the drainage has been improved to enable uh, typical uh, septic tank and related systems uh, to work and how you, how you design drainage systems for that uh, purpose. That is a big issue in some states, and particularly in the northeastern uh, part of uh, North Carolina. Uh, two, two sessions on the uh, drain mod, uh, the, the nitrogen balance in drain mod, uh, taught by Dr. Uh, Yusuf, um, and uh, then uh, three, no, two, two sessions on uh, simulating the performance of uh, stormwater detention basins, which uh, you can do with drain mod, and one on the use of drain mod uh, for uh, simulating um, 
in the irrigated arid areas primarily where uh, salinity control is a, a big issue. So that's what uh, is there. The, the model can be accessed. I'm going to leave this up here for just a second, and you can copy it down the, the, at, the, at the website shown here. No charge. Uh, you can access these modules uh, freely, and we'll commit to leaving them up there for free for a, at least a year. Uh, the second one is the shortcut that, that will, uh, will get you to the, the model itself. Now I'm going to uh, hit escape here. I think that's what I want to do. Yes, that's what I want to do. And I want to go. I'm going to go to module 16D, and it it has to do with uh, these these modules were the ones that were done uh, a, a year or so ago. Um, a little over a year ago, and what uh, you, you can't hear me talking, but uh, you, you would be able to, it's not set up here to, to do that, but uh, you of course would be able to do that. And incidentally, I, I, uh, there's a button down here that you can push that changes the speed from uh, <laughs> normal, normal pace, like I'm speaking now, to a Yankee cadence. <laughs> Uh, which is 1.4 times as fast as I'm speaking now. And, and then you can go up to 1.6 and 1.8. I, I call that a Pakistani kind of uh, English. So anyway, the, 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 uh, I've, I've now been trying to be a little more entertaining. I've gotten off the point I wanted to make, which is uh, um, here. I, 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 what I'm addressing here is is the issue of zones and how uh, how you select those zones. We we have had this discussion for control drainage and sub irrigation. Um, a 45 centimeters, a, a, a foot and a half, is a is a uh, typical zone that's used where you put the control structures um, as depicted there. Um, about uh, so that the elevation difference is about uh, a foot and a half. And the question is, is that close enough? And how much difference is there uh, from uh, the, the dry side of that on the upper side of the, con of the control zone where the water table, the control water table depth may be 75 or 90 centimeters deep uh, to the uh, shallower depth where it may be 60 centimeters deep. Um, and so the drain mod can be used to analyze that issue and, uh, and could be used to, to help you make a decision about uh, what, what uh, increment you really uh, should use. So uh, that's what's being discussed in, uh, in this application, and I'm going to get here pretty quickly. Maybe I should turn it up to faster speed. Um, to, to here, and maybe I shouldn't turn it up that fast to speed. So what I'm, what I'm showing here is the results for um, one soil. This is a, uh, this is the, the uh, soil from Iowa. The two drain spacings, the blue is I'm finding myself unable to see it on either screen. Um, is, the, is 20 meter spacing and the red is 30 meter spacing. And so what at the bottom, along the bottom axis there is the weir depth. And so if the weir depth is say 30 centimeters uh, here, these long-term average yields are about, these are corn yields, are about 85% uh, percent of potential. If the weir depth is 15 centimeters, that is if you, if you uh, held the weir close to the surface on the bottom side, 15 centimeters of the surface, that's too shallow, obviously, then the yield is depressed. But if, you're, if you want a, a, a 
one and a half foot, that's 45 centimeters, and the bottom side is 30 centimeters deep, and the top, centi the top side then would be 75 centimeters deep. This shows the variation in the long-term, uh, predicted long-term potential yields. It's pretty good. There, uh, there's not very much variation in that case. But the question you have in application is, should that be set shallow to not quite as deep, 15 centimeters to, uh, um, yeah, 15 centimeters to uh, uh, 60 centimeters, or should it be 30 centimeters to 75 centimeters? Well, these results say clearly that the latter, not the former. Uh, the point I'm making here is not to argue that point particularly, but in, uh, especially, but but to indicate to you that DRAMOT can be used to make those kinds of analyses. And what I'm showing in this case, there are two soils. One is the the uh, Kasuth soil and the, uh, the Iowa soil, and the other is the Palaya soil from uh, Missouri. And um, it went past where I wanted to be. Of the Kasuth soil, uh, the uh, the there was a I should not have been playing with this. The 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 point really I want to make here is there's a difference between the soils. One of them, the uh, the Palaya soil is more sensitive to the range in the uh, the weir controls than the other one is. So um, that, that is one, a, a small part of one of the lectures. It's one of the applications that is taught in these modules. Modules, as I said, can be freely accessed online. We will be having a, a two-hour workshop in the, at the Detroit ASABE meeting on the access of, the, of these modules and the application of it. Uh, at the meeting this summer. Now, where am I with time? Four minutes left. So, okay, let me get out of this. I've said what I need to say about that. These modules are available. Uh, and now I want to go to the other half of my presentation, which I'm going to do in four minutes. And that's, <laughs> that's fine. And As I said, all I want to point out here is, is to correct an error that I'm afraid I've made in the past. One of the inputs to the model, to all drainage models, is hydraulic conductivity. Uh, and determining what the field effective value of hydraulic conductivity is, is both important and difficult to do. Um, so this is a diagram <coughs> that shows the, the sequence of events of the way the water table evolves when you start out with a ponded surface, very wet conditions, and drainage occurs over time. Um, so the water table is uh, orig uh, originally 100 centimeters, at 100 centimeters above the drain, drains are 100 centimeters deep, and the water table is all the way over here. This is the water table elevation above the drain. It's 100 centimeters, and it's flowing right being drained is uh, indicated by this, the, the Kirkland equation, or maybe calculated by the Kirkland equation. As time goes along, that curve develops from, from situation one to two to three, and three is where the water table midway between the drain is right coincident with the surface. And that's right there. So as time goes along, water table, water table evolves so that it's a parabolic uh, shape, and you're about right there, and from then on it begins to fall. Water table falls with time, assuming no rainfall. This is how the drainage process occurs. Now, the one way of determining field effective conductivity is to measure the outflow rates as this process goes along, and measure the water table as the pr this process goes along, and then plot the water table, the drainage rate versus the water table elevation and you get this well-defined curve. 
as shown in this diagram. So then you draw a line through that, and you can calculate using the Hugot equation, you can calculate, you can back out the hydraulic conductivity. But the problem is, it's not a well-defined line. It's scattered like that, and the scatter is due to two things. Usually you think it's due to error, but it's more than error. Um, time? No, no, I, I'm asking, how much time do I have here? So you, if you look, these are, these, are, these are actually measured results, where we've plotted measured water table elevation, measured drainage rates versus water table elevations. And these are some more measured water table elevations and drainage rates. Do you see a well-defined curve here? No, the answer to that question is no. Here's what would occur based on theory, the, the Hugout equation are the red dots. And I won't write up the Hugout equation, I don't have time to do that, but the, the blue curve is the solution to the Boussinesq equation. It considers the transients without going into it in more detail. It considers, it predicts the water table shape and the water, and the, and, and with time, so you can see it fall. In fact, it looks like, all right, let me go. Now, that, that's, that's a case where you start out with saturated uh, profile and the water, uh, the water table falls for a long period of time, no rainfall. Here's the case when you're, it falls down for 110 hours and it gets down to this location here and it rains. And it rains a centimeter an hour for two hours. And when that happens, this is what happens. As the water table, water table goes up, that's that direction, and the drainage rate goes up. And it goes up like this. And then it quits raining. And it comes back down like this and joins this curve. The whole point of my showing you this is the Hugout equation does a very good job of defining the drainage rate as long as you're starting out here and going, continuing to drain. But when you get an interruption of that process, when you get rainfall, you get these kinds of curves, which the Hugout equation, its application, does not predict. The Hugout equation is not valid. Some of you don't know what the Hugout equation is, but it's the one that we've used to, to back out the hydraulic conductivity. This, the Hugout equation does not describe this process. It is not valid for this process. And so that's where all of that scatter comes from. If you've got many different events, well, here's the shape of the curve. This, this is the evolution of the, of the water table over time. This is time zero when it was saturated. As time goes along, it falls like that, and then it rains. It's down, this is 110 hours, it rains at that point, and it went back up like this to this blue curve here. And it's got, it's a, it's a fatter curve. It's, it's, it's the gradient close to the, to the uh, drain, drain here and drain over there, are higher. And so the Hugat equation doesn't describe this shape. It, it's not, it's not the right shape. So, the, in order to, in order to get an accurate number of, of a, a, the, the um, actual value of the, of the hydraulic conductivity, the field effect of hydraulic conductivity, you've got to get rid of all of these points here. Those are those scatter points. And so, you go back to that. Well, I'm. I'm I needed to have another slide there. If you go back to this, the reason reason for, the, for all of this scatter is that lots of these points in here are the result of rainfall that occurred or other interruptions in the flow process. And it's not the average that describes that process and will give you the right value for the hydraulic conductivity. It's the one that's down here on the bottom that will describe this main drainage curve, which the Hugout equation does describe. I'm over time again, and so I stop. Uh, my, uh, my only point it, with that is you, you need to know that there, there, are, there are, I said I was going to stop, didn't I? <laughs> there are ways of sorting this out, of removing the bad points and leaving you with the, the, the curve that will give you a true effective 
Freedom of Action has awesome. I apologize for taking 